Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video, as promised, we are going to test out the Max Space Plane in a shuttle stack form as opposed to its intended form, its original idea, which was to ride on the back of an AN-225 and separate from that with a, with a large external tank that feeds its two engines. Uh, a little word on the providence of this Max model. The model is from Buran.ru, I thought so, and I confirmed with Raider Nick. Raider Nick gave me the model, but he adapted it, uh, he converted it from a model off of Buran.ru, so that's where the model comes from. And uh, I just added textures and made it compatible with Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I got the blend file from Raider Nick. Uh, so that was actually three years ago, and initially I converted it into a model that had very few polygons and a very small file size that was about 10 megabytes but I was very dissatisfied with the look of the model and so that's why I produced it like this but the three-year wait is uh, worth noting I've of course improved my own skills in that time and that's one reason why I decided to tackle it now and I'm gonna make a whole AN-225 instead of before uh, I did test it with an AN-225 that I never produced those videos for YouTube, by the way. I tested it during live streams, but we couldn't get it to separate from the AN-225 safely. And so that was a problem, and that's why the YouTube videos never got made. But as far as making the mods go, you have to understand that I'm not really thinking of myself as a modder per se, in that I don't produce these mods for public consumption. I produce them for my purposes because I want to test ideas out and make videos on the ideas. And so the fact that I'm releasing the mod and the parts is sort of a side effect. I really only make them to my own satisfaction. And so other people might not be satisfied with the results as such, but I'm just here to try out crazy ideas that I had. So that's why I make the parts because I have these ideas and I wanna try them out. And that the reason why it's been three years is A, my skills were limited before and B, uh, I had new ideas. So I have new ideas related to the Max Space Plane that I wanted to try out that didn't necessarily have to do with having an AN-25, but we'll try that as well. I have an idea for how to make that work out. But as with all my ideas with the videos, I press record right before I think uh, they are done. Basically, I think that the next attempt will work, but I'm not sure. And so that's something uh, people who are not familiar with my videos need to understand. I have not tested this stack to success yet. I got it close. So I've tested it once, it got close to orbit, but it hasn't gotten to orbit. And so in general, when I'm testing things, I test them with suspense in my videos. They're, for both me and you, we don't know how it's gonna turn out. And so that's a policy that uh, is maybe not so common, but keep that in mind. Yeah, uh, it, is, it is a matter of suspense, both for me and you, whether this is going to work. And, but it is close. I always try and get it close first before pressing record, and then we'll see what happens. So the top olive green tank is the, well, the top tank is the kerosene. It's not uh, fully utilized. So there's a lot of space there. There's uh, 49.2 kiloliters that we're not using up there, but it's just simpler this way. There's the liquid oxygen tank, and there's the liquid hydrogen tank. And I had to be sure to get the quantities right, obviously, because there are two modes to these engines, and so that took a lot of finagling. But we really need the heavier propellants on top. Technically, we want the liquid oxygen on top, but this was simpler. But the reason we want the heavier propellants on top is so that the center of mass of the stack stays high so that the thrust vectors of the engines point through the center of mass. Uh, if the center of mass drifts down, if we put the oxygen down here, it would start going down uh, over time and then and towards the max. And then the thrust vector may not point through it very well. The, gim the engine gimbling on these engines is not very high because they just don't have a lot of space. There's a limited amount of room for them to gimbal there, so we have to keep that in mind. Choice of boosters was interesting. Uh, the external tank here is not too much heavier. It's about 20 tons heavier than the tank that Max would have on top of the AN-225, so we didn't really need 
humongous boosters. We need boosters that would get it to where the AN225 and the Delta V reading is just not going to be right because we've got the two modes on the engines here. Uh, but we needed boosters that would get the max space plane where the AN225 would get it, which was basically 30,000 feet or something like that. You know, so Mach uh, 0.8 something and 30-ish thousand feet. So p perhaps a little bit higher than that. But yeah, so given those requirements, I decided to just go with RD191s. And so that's what we have. And so just two boosters lasting a little under two minutes uh, for the RD191s, separatrons to make sure that they don't hit the wings. And we'll see how that works. Actually, on the first test, the only test of this so far, I did not put separatrons because I wanted to see what would happen. Uh, they did hit the wings, but did not kill the wings. So that was nice. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll try it with separatrons so that they don't have that happen. But, yeah, who knows? We'll see what happens. I haven't even started testing it for re-entry, but if we do get to orbit, we'll try that out. So, oh, uh, the main change from test one, except for putting the separatrons on the uh, boosters, is uh, the cockpit of the Max sort of points this way. And so I had to try and compensate for that during launch. That's good for the OMS engine. So in orbit, the reason why I'm not changing that is because the fact that it uh, sort of has its point of view pointing at an angle for launch is good for orbit because that matches the OMS engine's fine. So we'll keep that. Uh, but I decided to put a new control core on top of the external tank in order to control from there during launch. So that's what we're going to do, and hopefully that will get us the remaining delta V we need to get to orbit, because the launch will be more precise. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we do have a cargo in the bay. It is seven tons of ab gas inside the bay. And in fact, on the model I had made with lower polygons three years ago, I eliminated the cargo bay because it was just too much to deal with. It is the source of most of the polygons on this. Uh, you can tell that the exterior model doesn't look that complicated. The interior of the cargo bay is really crazy. So we're controlling from here. On the pad, this is less mass than the Falcon 9. It's worth noting. So, which should make sense considering the efficiency of our propellants. And ignition. And launch. Okay, well that vector is... let's not do that. <laughs> We're launching from Cape Canaveral, sorry. It looks better. If we had really fancy textures for Baikonur, that would be nice. I get the feeling that I'm going to want Smart ASS for this. Uh, I think I might have wanted to rot... okay. Something is rotated wrong. This is probably not going to be a very successful flight. Well, we'll try it. Okay, it looks like that top core is rotated 90 degrees off from where I thought it was. Well, looking good now. Somebody asked whether I would make a Dream Chaser. Probably not. It duplicates the functionality of my own Shuttle Mark II too much, I think. And my Shuttle Mark II is more capable. The boosters can thrall down. Uh, I'm not going to right now. And booster set. Ooh, that's vigorous. Probably for the best, though. So we have to keep an eye out for when we want to do the mode switch, which is when the kerosene just about runs out. Also, I have to be careful. Oh, it's using the kerosene here. Stop. Oh, shoot. Okay, so it starts using the kerosene here. We should just lock that because the RCS and OMS on here use kerosene and HTP. Got about that. Okay, so let's try to launch again. And this time I'll remember to orient it properly. And this time I'll just start it off with uh, Smart ASS so we don't have to change to it. Okay, ignition. Throttle up. And launch. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. 
Execute more. Execute more. That will need refinement. We really have too much time to apolapse this like this. Okay, booster set. Alright, and we really need to keep an eye on this top tank to see when to switch modes. We can't look at that because that includes the kerosene in the max space plane. So obviously the boosters get us way beyond where the AN-225 does, and that suggests that we should be able to get more payload to orbit than planned. Oops, I forgot to switch mode. Oh, oh no, it's, it worked. Shoot. That was almost a problem, because these only have one ignition right now. That's a factor of the realism overhaul configurations for the RD-704. I didn't configure these myself, so... That's what it's set to. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or not. I do know they were supposed to be reusable, but other than that... This doesn't seem like we're gonna make it right now. Yeah, I think we're going to need to... refine our launch a bit. That was obviously not good enough. So let's try again. We, we ended up with a very high apoapsis there. Launch and very much execute and pitch this way a lot. Just start this way. Maybe I should just start it off the pad tilted, darn it. Okay, and booster set. Okay, and mode switch. Alright, well, smooth mode switch this time. If it doesn't work this time and it's tight, we might want to reduce the payload and or add some more fuel to this external tank. Probably add more fuel. It seems to have plenty of thrust to weight ratio. I mean, right now, it's uh, uh, sort of close to one-ish. But overall... One way or another, we're going to complete orbit with the OMS engines, so... If we're a little bit shy of orbit and have to complete it with the OMS, that's fine, but it depends on how much. Ultimately, the best thing to do for something like this is actually to have KOS handle it. It can deal with the shuttle very smoothly, and I expect it would do the same with this. It looks like it's pointed down, but actually the engines are just about horizontal now. But we do want a slightly lopsided orbit for jettison of the tank. Okay, well, we're, we're quite a bit from orbit still. Uh, at least 200 meters per second. But let's proceed and we'll see how it does on re-entry so I get a sense of what other things I need to fix. So, separation and start. Well, obviously we do not have the propellants unlocked. Let's do that. RCS. Away. And actually, let's just go prograde here. I didn't really need force roll though. <laughs> it's a little bit awkward right now, but all right. At least we can see that it rolls. Well, I think we're clear anyway. All right, uh, I'll do this method and ignition. Yeah, the RD-704s have no ignitions remaining. That's nominal. So, when using the OMS engines, we shouldn't be using any pitch authority, otherwise they're not pointing properly through the center of mass, and we see that it is balanced. So, they're pointed fine. The center of mass location basically has to be correct, because the though the plume location is wrong, but the, the model had the OMS engines point, you know, oriented the way they are right here, 
and so we have the thrust vector appropriate so the center mass basically has to be where it is right now means me why sometimes the plume just doesn't want to go with the thrust transform location in theory it should just always be right but I guess that theory is incorrect Okay, so that would be a normal apoapsis for me for re-entry, and then we'll round it out. Um, we might not round it out, actually. I don't have a fuel cell on here right now, so we're going to run out of electric charge. So what we'll do is we'll just pull our periapsis down to a normal level and work from there. Unfortunately, the rudder is from B9 procedural wings, so it sort of glows differently than the rest of the body. I don't know any way of changing that. We're just going to go with a zero kilometer periapsis. The OMS engines are to spec on the thrust, but there's some uncertainty about their ISP, as well as whether they actually use the kerosene HTP. And that's presumed because the RCS uses it. But uh, not certain. So we're at half hour fuel left over. And we've got basically a zero periapsis. So we will approach the atmosphere and see what happens. We are carrying more payload down than it normally would. So that's a thing. Uh, I think it's down payload capacity was 4.5 tons or something like that. Overall controllability seems fine, but the real test would be docking. The translation is the question mark, and that's because while I could see the large thrusters on the model, I can see the small vernier thrusters, which are uh, the location which of which I don't know. There are about 12 of them, and those would be helping with translation uh, because, of course, docking is a very fine-tuned sort of deal. Uh, most of the translation helper thrusters are really tiny ones. Okay, we are entering the atmosphere here. Okay, we have done. We're still pretty high up, so the fact that we're well balanced is not a surprise. The aerodynamics isn't hurting us too much yet, if it will at all. Okay, we are at 80 kilometers. It's still okay, but we're using a little bit of pitch authority to pull our nose up. And that means that our center of mass is too far forward by a little bit. We will monitor that situation. It might be due to our payload. We'll think about that. I, I The payload is in the, the back of the base, so it probably shouldn't be. But uh, even if our center of mass is in the right place, it's possible our center of lift needs to be shifted a little bit. But it's still safe at this point. We're gaining a little bit of lift per normal. Overall, our RCS usage is very minimal. We are approaching the west coast of Mexico. We're probably a bit high for landing at Cape Canaveral. We'll see. Okay, we have some heating effects. We're at 70 kilometers. Uh, we're using about half of our yaw authority, which is worrisome. Uh, not that much pitch authority, but we'll have to look into why it needs to use yaw authority at all. It shouldn't. Uh, but overall, our RCS usage is minimal. Its RCS thrusters are not very powerful uh, compared to the shuttles, obviously. The shuttle has much more powerful RCS thrusters. Okay, well, 65 kilometers, we're using a little bit more than half of our yaw. The pitch doesn't seem as much of a problem. We're approaching the coast of Florida, so it's looking like we'll overshoot given our current speed and height. But it's doing better than I expected, so there's that. The KSC is actually over to the left there. If it was safe to turn, we could turn, but I don't think it's safe to turn. And we're going to be overshooting by quite a lot, actually. 
It's possible that the fact that the wings are actually meant to flip up would have helped on the yaw control, similar to the way Starship has it. I don't know if they would actually use that during re-entry, or whether that was just to manage aerodynamics during uh, the launch from the AN-225, but it's possible. Sort of the key speed for pitching down, as far as I've seen, is um, Mach 5.5-ish. And we start thinking about it around 45 kilometers. But yeah, yaw is always a problem around here. This is where that becomes an issue, and it's sure getting on the edge there. I may, let's try and pitch down early. I don't know if that'll help, but... Well, it seems to help the yaw a bit. Yeah, just pitching down a little bit helps with the yaw. Maybe it's not meant to have that high of an angle attack. So yeah, at about Mach 5.5 we have to worry about stalling, basically. Seems ridiculous, but, you know... There is a point where it can't keep acting like a pod and has to act like a plane. And this is about that time. And you can see it changed to nominal now. That means that we are now okay for being a plane. <laughs> so that that's that's fine. But we might as well just go ahead and pitch down. We don't want to pitch down so much that our Mach number starts to go up again. So you can see it sort of stabilized that now it's going up. So I'll pitch up a little bit to make sure it doesn't go up. Uh oh, uh oh, uh, okay, oh no, 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 ah, uh, well, that was sudden. <laughs> hmm, that was sudden and suspicious. Uh, well, RCS probably isn't a big deal right now. Huh. I was not expecting that. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Oh no, don't go away, don't go away. Ah, uh, it's not all right anymore. Let me try SAS instead. Well. Uh. <laughs> well, ah yes, KSP physics. Well, some work clearly needs to be done. <laughs> Those landing gear and wing surfaces, though. Hmm. I thought we had done an aero test, but okay, not enough of an aero test. And yeah, we will need to work on re-entry. It, it's obviously stalled out. We probably needed to pitch down more aggressively. So that's my current theory, but. Yep, that is the state of things. That's your max shuttle for you. Uh, I'm going to try and adapt a real external tank for it and then make an AN-225. And that's going to be even more havoc. But maybe we'll see some use of this shuttle format for the max uh, later on in other things. But yeah, more testing will be necessary. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.